Hey guys, it's Ross over at The Daily Jaws. I hope you're well. Today we've got a really special video as it's the 35th anniversary of Jaws the Revenge and I get to speak to Lance Guest and Mitchell Anderson, aka Michael Brody and Sean Brody. We get to talk about the movie, their experiences making it, and some fantastic stories, including one where Michael Caine actually saved Lance Guest's life. Let's check out a quick clip and then we'll dive into the interview. kids do I have? I know you can use the phone by yourself. You're a big girl. I'm five years old now, Grandma. I know you're five years old. Hiya, kiddo. How you doing down there in the sunshine? I'm fine, Uncle Sean. I went swimming today. I'm taking lessons. She already swims like a fish. Hey, Michael. Hey, bro. The fish. Check it. No, hey, you check no, it. Hello. Come on, let me I talk to you. Oh. <laughs> Your grandmother is a slave driver. Tell her to be nice to me. Did you get the book I sent you? Yeah. Hey, ask the big doctor about his job. Top life, you Bahamian beach bum playing in the water all day. I heard that. He heard that. Good. Lance Guest, Mitchell Anderson, a.k.a. Michael and Sean Brody from Jaws the Revenge. Welcome to the Daily Jaws. How are you guys doing? Hello. We're, uh, we're, we're Hello. good. I think the first question that everybody kind of wants to know is, can you believe it's 35 years since Jaws the Revenge came out? Not really. Although I have been in my house for 35 years. And so I always people I always tell people that. So that's that that number kind of goes, oh, okay, that sort of lines up with <laughs> finishing Jaws. <laughs> oh, I see. So your house is, um, is from Jaws money? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Perfect. Is, is that one of the uh, things that happened on during the production? Because Michael Caine. I don't know if you've heard his famous quote about the movie, yes. but, but he said yes. he's never seen the movie, but he's seen the house that it built and paid for. And it's amazing. So is that, what you, is that what everybody on Jaws Revenge did? Did they just go out and buy houses? Is that what happened? Well, I don't know. I, I, I am a very, <laughs> I don't buy many things. And, and, uh, and uh, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. We, you know, we ran like two and a half times overtime. Mm. We were supposed to shoot it in 10 weeks, I think. And we ended up, almost five months wow so yeah but if you were if you're my character you didn't have enough money at the end of jaws to buy a house unfortunately that is true <laughs> that is true they, that came right. you. they dispatched you right away they, yeah exactly i was gonna say because you had you both had very different experiences making the movie obviously lance you were in the beautiful of well, the most of the time most of the time the beautiful bahamas mitchell tell us about your experience because it was slightly different wasn't it well, it was, uh, yeah, completely different. The only time I ever actually met Lance was, I think, at a read-through with um, the whole cast in Martha's Vineyard. Um, and then they all left, and we shot, you know, those, those that first 10 minutes. And then um, after they came back from the Bahamas, I had some shots in the tank at Universal. But basically, I didn't work with anybody. Um, except for Lorraine Gary um, mm. and Joe, the director. So, um, yeah, so the, they all had a great time in the Bahamas while I froze my ass off. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah. there, there, is your, thing uh, as, Bay. there is such a thing as island fever, you know, where, you, where you're there and you're like, wow, this is so great. And then like two weeks pass and then three weeks pass and then four weeks pass. And you're like, I got to get off this island. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell, you mentioned Lorraine Gary. What what was it like for you guys to both work with her? Because obviously she's sort of always sort of George royalty. You know, she was in the first and, and the second movie, but she came out of retirement to do the fourth one. So what, what was that like? Uh, she was lovely. Um, I, yeah. you know, this was a, a very uh, this was one of my first jobs uh, out of out of uh, drama school. So. Um, for me, everything was new and everything was exciting and just, you know, sitting in Mario Vamples and Lorraine Gary uh, at that table, read, like, that was super exciting for me. So the whole, the whole experience couldn't have been better. Like that was, and, and I got, uh, Sergeant directed, uh, the Cam Carpenter story, which I did shortly after that. So that mm. was really a, you know one of the great things that came to me so 
that was a fantastic TV yeah. movie. I've, I've seen that. I remember watching that. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Lance? What was your experience of working with Lorraine? Because you guys had some really intense oh, scenes yeah. in the movie. Oh no, Lorraine was Lorraine was great because she she kept she just literally treated me like I was her own son. You know, like in 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 any type of any type of you know social situations or anything like that. She just completely just like warmed up to me immediately. You know, she was really really wonderful and and uh, you know she always was always talking about her kids and always you know and she kind of reminds me of a, a friend of mine's mom. Mm. Um, one of my good friends, mom, who I really, really like. And, uh, so, you know, she was really quite, quite wonderful. I thought, that's, I mean, that's, that's nice to hear. Cause sometimes you hear that people aren't quite as nice sort of on oh, set, yeah, no, but she, it's amazing. She definitely um, is. In terms of uh, sort of that first read through when you did it, was the script that you did at the read through very different to the finished product? And, and as you were going through the script, what were you, what were you sort of thinking about the overall, story arc because obviously it's almost like a movie of two halves where you've got this really intense really well done family drama and then it just goes a bit crazy <laughs> well mitch do you want to do you want to join in a letter your stuff wasn't quite as affected yeah no mine wasn't at all and i you know i had three scenes at the beginning so i can't really comment on all that but um but yeah i i think i want to hear about what you think about the family drama well what what ended up happening is that is that I, I think I told you this when we we did interviews, but um, what, what ended up happening was that they, the writer and the people planning out the movie, they planned out specific things that they wanted to happen with the shark, and basically stunts. They were stunts, you know, because it was practical effects. So the effects, um, they sort of went ahead with rehearsing us, and you know kind of we got the green light before the the effects guys were like uh, I don't think we could do that so like right before as when we our first read throughs were all fine and you know the script went this certain way it has a it has a real specific uh, trajectory and a lot of the stuff is I mean for a horror movie it was was somewhat justified you could really understand you know you could sort of connect the dots and um see you know how one thing could follow another and how this would make sense oh you would know that and then this happens and that's why you react this way blah 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 so <clears throat> when they realized that they couldn't get some of those stunts they had to sort of change their change things around and so they, what they did is they shifted scenes around they eliminated some things and because they got you know they just couldn't get the it's a physical thing it's not cgi it's a physical thing you couldn't mm. make that happen and they had a hard time making what they planned to make happen too, which is famous. Jaws is always famous for that anyways. So consequently, the, the order of the scenes got shifted around and I'm really kind of like, my only job is to make sure that the, there was like a line of logic going through the scenes of everything I have to do if I have a major part. So that's the, really the only thing I pay attention to. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you know, <laughs> uh, I was when I got that rewritten script, I was like, uh, wait, we shoot tomorrow. Yep. Yep. You know, you know, Joe, he's like, all right, watch this, you know. And uh, so uh, so I was like, I was totally fine until like the night before we started shooting. And then I was like, oh, my God, this doesn't this doesn't attract for me. <laughs> yeah. And so and so I kind of you know, I kind of freaked out, but you know, they were just kind of like, oh, well, it'll be fine. And so I was the guy that asked questions all the time. You know, I was like pestering Joe all the time, poor Joe and Michael. And, and it's just like, you know, Joe's a good director, Mike's a good writer, you know, all those things. But, but I was certainly a uh, hit with the, oh, wait, this didn't look, this doesn't look like the script that I read. It, it's so. funny you say about sort of trying to build the action around the shark, because I believe the, the conversation between Sid Scheinberg and, and, and Joe Sargent was, we need to find a new way to kill the shark. And then what we could do is we could basically do what you want with it. So Joe came up with this amazing sort of premise and an ending to the movie and it sort of works backwards and try to build the action around the shark. So yeah, absolutely. It sounds like that's, that's absolutely what happened. Um, in terms of the shark itself, obviously, Mitchell, you didn't get a chance to really work with the shark, I'm assuming, because I don't think we see actually sort of any physical practical effects in, in your scene. 
but obviously the sharks and the other three jaws movies were really difficult really challenging to the production what was it like to work with the mechanical shark was it was it easier was it okay or was it just a nightmare you had a more intimate relationship uh with the with the shark, right? Don't, uh, Mitch, did you, the, the shark was visible of you, of you going down or no? No, I, all of my stuff was reaction. I never, I never was with the shark at all. Um, <laughs> so, you know, they chopped off my arm and I just react. Um, uh, and then, you know, they did a lot of close ups in the, in the tank and stuff. But yeah, mm -hmm. I never, I never worked with the shark at all. And, and how long, Mitch, did it take for your arm to grow back? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Well, <laughs> Hey, uh, it's, it's in pretty good shape right now, so we're, we're, we're all good. So it's only, only 35. I, I, I saw you in After Forever. You, yeah, it's, your arm's growing back pretty well by the looks of things. Um, yeah. In terms of the movie, when it sort of first came out and you saw it for the first time, what, what were your impressions of what, what they sort of ended up creating? Um, I... I had been for I had been forewarned by the editor. And the editor had said to me, I he he paid me a very very good compliment, and he said, I I I felt like you were really trying to connect the scenes together, and I, you know. And he very seriously said, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you, you know, really trying to thread the things together um, because that I mean that was literally my only that was all, all my focus was on. Um, and so I was, uh, I think, pleased. I can't remember. I think I was pleased. I wasn't like, oh my God. I, I, I think I was pleased that the stuff that I figured would happen did happen. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they were, they, they, they didn't like ignore things that I did or that I wanted to, you know, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't like unhappy with my performance, I guess, okay. because I knew that it would have a lot of holes. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mitchell? What did you think of the movie when, uh, when you sort of first saw it? You know, honestly, I, I, I remember I was, I was thinking about this interview and, and um, just bringing back memories. Um, I remember the, um, the, premiere at Universal Studios and as I said it was my first job like it was my first big thing and it, it, it didn't really matter to me what the movie ultimately turned out to be because for me it was so exciting every every moment was great um, and I do have to say that every time it's on for 35 years every time it plays I get calls and emails and texts from all over the country from friends who who see it, and they go, "Oh, I just watched you die again." <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, it's and it's one of those movies, I, isn't it? I haven't people love seen it in a while, but but that um, somebody showed it to me the other day, and um, that one reaction shot of me realizing that my arm is gone is actually pretty good. You know, I what? think that's yeah. pretty, pretty good acting right there. I Absolutely. think it's pretty damn good. That's all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think uh, fans have become sort of kinder to the movie as years have, have gone on? Because one of the most controversial questions that we ask on Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is which sequels do you prefer is it Jaws 2 Jaws 3 or Jaws, uh, Jaws the Revenge normally Jaws the Revenge outscores Jaws 3D by, and by quite a bit um, and I think that that's kind of changing I think people are discovering this movie and, and actually really enjoying it but, but what do you think do you think sort of the fans that meet you and talk about the movie do, do, do you think it's starting to find its audience I well, I um, guess yeah I I think it's kind of amazing that 35 years later, people still watch it. I mean, yeah. don't you, Lance? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, I, it, 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 it is very colorful. I mean, I have to say the production values compared to the, the, the second, the middle two, the middle two are not very, you know, they have a lot of that underwater sea park thing. And, you know, I just didn't think that was terribly cinematic or you know photograph whatever i mean mm. you know i just didn't it wasn't a you know the bahamas were sort of this wonder world you know this kind of aquatic wonder world you know all the underwater stuff and 
And, uh, you know, it's certainly colorful and there's lots of different types of people in there. It isn't just like the, the sort of standard teenage kids that, you know, they last like 30 seconds and then they're dead, you know? Yeah. You know, um, there's really no comparison to the first one. The first one is just a classic film that's really, if you took a shark out of it, it would still be a good movie. You know, it's like, it's just a great movie. It's just, mm. it's just hands down a great movie. Um, but uh, I'm glad, uh, I guess people like it as, as much because, you know, they really hated it when it came out. <laughs> you know? Yeah, oh, you see some of the reviews. Oh, I remember one review talking about Lorraine's um, shoulder pads. That, yes. that has made me laugh. <laughs> I know. It, it was like... If that's the biggest concern. <laughs> Sorry, Mitchell, what did you say there? Say that again, so your internet's cutting out oh, a little bit. So one one review I read, oh she one review said that she put the nail in the coffin of the of uh, shoulder pads yes, of that 80s. fashion trend. The fashion because, trend. Yeah. They did suddenly go the out of fashion, didn't they? The, you never saw them again, yeah. did you? Anywhere. They left oh, Faye really? Dunaway alone with Joan Crawford. I mean, come on. <laughs> they left her alone. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. exactly. Why does Faye get a break? And, and Lorraine doesn't. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Lorraine's a way nicer person Bullshit. than Faye. Bullshit. In, in terms of the film itself, are there any particular favorite moments? They don't necessarily need to be parts that you're in, but are there any particular favorite moments from the movie that stand out for you? Um, I haven't seen it so long, I can't even remember. Um, I, I I think it just it just because I know it so well that the cutting between me in the in the harbor, getting you know getting chomped, and the the Christmas carols and the singers, mm. I think that the that the tension between those two things I think worked really well, yeah. um, and I know it scared my mom half to death. Oh, that's, good. <laughs> that's what you want. That's yeah, that's, that's good. what you want. That's yeah. fair. Um, yeah, you want your mom to cry when you die, so she did. Well, then it's obviously an emotive scene, and it worked. Perfect yeah. difference. That's the performance. What about you, Lars? Anything uh, sort of comes I, to mind that you think that's a great moment? I pretty much just like all the shots that were that they like all the stunts that we did that we successfully mm. did. Like any physical stuff, jumping in the water, swimming, climbing up in the boat, doing all this stuff, running around. I I was kind of happy with what that looked like in general. Mm. Like any of the uh, any of the action. Um, the the and, chase sequence yeah. with you in the boat is is fantastic. That's actually really well done, yeah. and I think a lot of that is um, I think the, the the setup, but also the the score, the music, I think really yeah. helps sell that that sequence. Um, that's actually, I really appreciate that. I'm not it. That's not me. That's Gavin. But. Uh, but uh, he was my stunt guy. But Gavin was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gavin is very like you know, he's got his he's he's like sort of balletic with his flippers and stuff. And he's like he looked really cool. He he made me look good. <laughs> there's there's actually something that someone's done recently where they've actually replaced the shark in that sequence and they've removed Bruce or Vengeance wow. as they call it and they've actually yeah. CGI'd it. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. I it's, wish I'll send you a link had. to it. It's really yeah. good. It's really, really interesting to see. It's just sort of a flavor of what a Jaws movie might look like if the shark was sort of CGI. And it doesn't look yeah. um, silly. It really sort of adds a nicer effect. And it would have, would have taken a lot less time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now this next question, I was, so I was just gonna say this next question, I don't want to ask you guys to incriminate yourselves, um, but did you get to keep any souvenirs from the filming? Mm, I, I didn't. Um, but I didn't work on it long enough, really. Mm. I, I wish I kept that. My, uh, my you did that. Some of the, I think I got to keep some of the clothes, you know, some of the wardrobe. Like I mm. had a bunch of those those great shirts you can't get anymore. You know those those light blue work shirts, Mitch. You know they they cost like seven yeah. seven now. They used to be like five dollars at the working man store. Now they're like seventy dollars. You can't get them unless they, you know, they're like really expensive. Um, yeah, I had several pairs of 501s. I mean, I, I just got, I just get it close, you know. 
<laughs> That's not bad. I had trade. such a weird size. I was like, you know, I was Je- like Ichabod Crane. Je- jeans in a house. That's not. That's not bad. For yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, um, I should have gotten like a tooth or something. You know, a shark tooth. Yeah, I think we, those are really popular. Those, those sort of ornaments and stuff like that. Now, obviously, you guys didn't get to share any scenes, but you did both shoot on Martha's Vineyard. Um, and in for the first two movies, the, the residents weren't sort of super happy about filming. Um, what were they like sort of this time round? And what was it like to be on Martha's Vineyard, you know, the home of Jaws? You want to go, Mitch? Do you want to stay? Or... I thought it was amazing. Um, uh, we were there in February, so it was pretty dead in terms of, you know, there, it wasn't like, I think the other movies were probably filmed in the middle of the summer. So in the height of the season. So when we were there, I remember when we first got there, it had snowed. Remember Lance, there was snow on the ground. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, it was, and it was, it was like... absolutely, yeah, it was gorgeous. Um, and I feel like the town was super happy to have us there because it was, it was, low season it was you know mm-hmm. february so i don't uh i loved being there it was great i i, I did too i mean i love new england and i and i you know had never had never been you know we really i've been in new york when it's been that cold but i've never been on an island and you know it was a very unique place and i always heard about martha's vineyard you know i'm a big like james taylor fan and that's where he sort of grew up and and uh so it's like uh I, I just kind of, I didn't notice that the, the 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 locals didn't like us because I didn't see many locals. The people that I saw that I came into contact with were people that are actually in the, you know, smaller parts in the film, you know, like the ladies that worked at the uh, police station, remember them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I guess they flew them up from New York or some of them were local, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I I had a I had a great time. I went to like a jam. I played banjo with this jam, you know, this like mm. folk music jam that we had out in some health food store out in whatever it's called. I forgot what it was called, but yeah, a lot of people fun. that seem to have filmed there seem to have had a great experience on Martha's Vineyard. Um, but I've got some questions now regarding acting. So the shark movie at the moment seems to be going through somewhat of a resurgence. There's obviously Sharknado and Jurassic Shark and all of these crazy movies, but also some really great ones like The Reef and The Shallows and all that sort of stuff. So there's sort of the, the Jaws legacy films. If you guys were approached to do a shark movie, do you think you'd you'd do it? <laughs> well, I don't really act. Anymore. Um, uh, it would be, I, I would, yeah, sure, I would do it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if some, some somebody asked me, I mean, the thing is, th- they can do it better now because of the, you know, you just have to imagine stuff, you know, mm. and they do it in CGI, you know, they do it in, they do it in the computer, right? And, I mean, that's what they were. And here, okay, here's a question that we actually got from one of our followers, and they really want, I think this is a great question. You both said that you, you really like the, the original movie. If you had to pick a role from the original movie, who would you want to play most? uh current current age <laughs> i think it could that's be how, anybody <laughs> i think the, i think we all i think we can all agree the coolest part is robert shaw's part is yeah. quint what about that's you mitchell do you agree I mean, the, the the hooper part is really fun the hooper part is really fun but it's yeah. was that dreyfus yeah yeah hooper was dreyfus yeah, yeah that's right that's what I would do. richard dreyfus i think he'd be that a good part. hooper for sure that although yeah. you might have to borrow Lance's hair and beard because that's sort of the more Hooper look I think so maybe just to get the post or something <laughs> it was really the, the the combination of those three guys it was really like the the chemistry between those three guys that really made that movie great I thought mm. and just you know the, the, the although although they don't really get together until like the third act but mm. you see them in this somewhat in the second act and um it's just that whole just that that chemistry of those personalities, and they were both, and they were all so great. And that that dialogue was great. And then I love I love I love the story of how they how they came up with the uh, USS Indianapolis story. You know, you know that story, yeah. right? You heard that story. Uh, yeah. incredible story. And you know, your buddy Mario directed the movie about that story. 
Do you know that? Oh, is that right? That's right. Yeah, there's a Nicolas Cage movie that. called USS Indianapolis, uh, Men of Courage, and Mario uh, directed oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah worth a watch. Remember. Worth a watch. It's very good. What was it like working with, with Michael Caine? Well, we, first of all, were like, wow, it's great he's doing this movie. <laughs> and, uh, and he was pretty much like as unpretentious as you would expect him to be, mm. you know, to me, he just was, so, he was just like a re totally regular guy. He mm. wasn't like, Hi, I'm a big movie star. He would, you know, he'd be like, oh, I don't think I want to do that. You know, uh, when something would happen, but he was pretty game to kind of do, to do anything. Um, once in a while he was like, no, nah, I won't be doing that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in general, he, he was not, he was, there was nothing at all diva ish about him at all. He was very, um, you know, he's a, he's a tough guy. He's a working class guy, you know, right. Mm. Or he's Micklewhite. Yeah. That's him. <laughs> Mr. Micklewhite. Well, sir. Yeah. Micklewhite now. Sir Micklewhite. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I thought it was really cool. Cause he just, he just, he treated everybody like they're just, they're not, they're not like, hi, I'm this big hotshot actor, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I've been, I've been around some actors that are like that. And there yeah. was no, to me, there was like no attitude at all. There was no, and he just makes everything look so easy. So it's, you know, you kind of learn a few things from him. You know, yeah. I told you my story. I, I'm sure I told you my story about how when the, the boat filled with water and the, the battery at the bottom of the boat uh, got wet and it's encased in plastic, the battery that powered, powered the, the, the camera, the front of the boat went down and the DP threw the camera onto the barge. And I just feel this hand grab me and Michael came with one hand pulls me out of the boat because he thought I was going to get electrocuted. So um, he wasn't sure. And there's a battery pack in there and the battery pack has a crack in it. You know, who knows, yeah. you know, what it, what it had. It might have just been 12 volt, but still 12 volt. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Pardon? He basically saved your life or you could just say that. I, I say that. That's my, yeah. that's my, my, it's my, my true story bullshit claim. That's what I say. <laughs> um, uh, but he did. He just get a bug out of the boat. You know, he pulls me out and, uh, and it just was kind of, kind of cool. You know, it was just like, thanks man. <laughs> Cause you know, the barge is like right next to where all this stuff is happening. It looks like you're, yeah. there's I think barge that might right be, there. I think it might be an exclusive. I don't think anybody knows that. Last oh, yeah, guest no, no, saved no, by no, Austin. I've told that story actor. a million times. <laughs> wow it's, it's not on imdb because we did a bit of research and obviously imdb is a sometimes a questionable source but there's one bit of um uh trivia that came up that we have to ask you about which is when you guys were filming in the tank and they dyed the water blue and apparently it turned your hair blue or it turned you blue like smurfs is that correct it didn't turn my hair blue it didn't turn you blue I don't know if it turned it anything, it would turn it green. Probably those of us that there were people that had blonde, sort of slightly brown, blonde hair. A lot of times you've got blonde hair and you're in something like that, you know, your hair turns green. Um, don't really remember that. Mm. Those tank days were, that, that yeah. was nasty. Uh, One of those but I did have a, an experience in the tank that was pretty funny. Um, at, one, they had the, the boat on the hydraulics, then they, you know, were shaking it around. And suddenly, and I'm on the boat, everybody is on the side of the pool, right? And I'm on the boat, and suddenly it goes, ka -chunk. And I was like, um, guys, the boat is sinking. And they were like, oh, yeah, it's, all, it's, it's on hydraulics. It's not sinking. And I'm like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> sinking. And sure enough, a minute later, the whole boat goes under and I swim to the side of the, the, the pool. And they were like, oh, crap. So <laughs> we had to shower for three days while they fixed the hydraulics and fixed the boat. And the funny thing is that the, um, that story was picked up by Army Archer in The Hollywood Reporter. And he said, actor saved on the, you know, on the set of Jaws. Yeah. There was actually so a very similar story on the set of the original Jaws. Have you heard that story? Where no. they, they basically got the orca and there's a bit where the shark hits it. So the orca tips over. And what they've done is they put a bolt in the bottom of the boat and ran a cable underneath it to a speedboat. And what they did is show action and the speedboat pulled the boat. The thing is the bolt came out when the speedboat took off and the orca started taking on water for real. 
what ended up happening was John Carter, who won the Oscar for sound for Jaws, basically got this Nagra, which is like this old style sort of recording <laughs> machine. And he's basically, forgive my language, but this is a, a quote. He said, fuck the actors, save the sound department. <laughs> and, the, and the boat was just sinking. And Robert Shaw was just getting nicely buttoned up and dressed and straightening his hat and then just going down with the ship. Apparently it was just an absolute disaster. <laughs> <laughs> so his, history repeated itself. Um, oh Lance, we've got a, a question about uh, Judith, um, obviously one of your, your co-stars. I mean, it must have been really sort of mixed, lovely but sad memories of, of filming with your on-screen daughter, Judith. Um, yeah. How did it sort of make you feel to reflect on the movie from, from that perspective? Um, well, um, I you know, I have to say I while we were working you know she was lovely and you know a wonderful little girl and but her mom i remember her mom was always really nervous she was always very nervous and i just thought oh well she's her mom was from a different country her mom had this very strong accent i think she might have been mm. hungarian or something she has a very strong accent and she she just every everything was like you know every, she was just very nervous about everything all the time and we just thought oh she's just like that because she's maybe she's uncomfortable with language or maybe you know who knows um and everything you know went fine you know she was lovely to work with and she was adorable and and everything and then all of a sudden we were uh i remember i was with uh the the key grip on our show his name's ronnie record and uh he was he was building a bike for me he was building a racing bike for me because he's really good at that stuff and when we found out that she had passed away, I was with Ronnie and we just were like, whoa, you know, the story mm. was just so, so rough. And so like, oh my God. Yeah. So that was my only, I mean, it's, it's, it's very sad, but I sort of, I could see there was something going on mm. uh, early, but I didn't think it would, you know, be come to that end, you know, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember reading the story when I was I was quite young, and I I couldn't believe it because I was probably a similar age to Judith at the time as well. I was just, uh, how does how does something like that happen? Um, very 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 sad story. Yeah. Yeah, um, very sad story. Okay, so coming to the end of the questions, um, and we always do this with our guests. So we always sort of say, if there was a Jaws five, what would be your pitch? If you were going to say, if you were going to write it or create it or direct it or have some kind of part in it from a creative perspective, what would be your 30 second Jaws 5 pitch? Um, I have, I have bad, I have like, I, I kind of have a problem with the very, the very idea of keeping the family the same and having the shark keep attacking the same family. I think that's a little <laughs> crazy. It's like the only way to justify that is like, you know, people that get struck by lightning, they get struck by lightning again. Mm. You know, you know, the statistic, if I you get struck by lightning, this. you're, you are, have this like very high percentage of being struck by lightning again. And I think that's a very weird uh, statistic, but it's really the only justification I can come up with making a movie about, a family that keeps getting attacked by <laughs> sharks, <laughs> you know? So I, I feel like I would just make it a, about a different shark. I would just have it in a different place, set it in Australia, you know, have yeah. a whole new story. You know? Have you read the- oh, yeah, Jaws? like Great, Great Barrier Reef kind of thing. Yeah, mm. yeah. Because That's where it, a lot of- just, It would be like, um, you know, the, the things where you go and you swim with sharks in a cage, and then the the sharks figure out how to rip the cage apart, and they yeah. kick it up, at something like that. There you go. Well, uh, involves more, certain and that's what of it, <laughs> the barrier. Well, to your point, Lance, around just the same shark killing the same family or trying to get them. Have you guys ever read the Jaws: The Revenge novelization? I think I'm I have you, it it's there's a there's a voodoo no. angle which and there's a curse on the family and there's that's what? a voodoo angle on it and that's the okay. reason why the shark keeps going so voodoo lightning i can kind of see that working i think that would be quite good um okay so just a couple of more questions um so obviously there's quite a lot of uh sequels that have been sort of or franchises that are getting rebooted and lance this is a question from our writer uh, chief writer dean um 
when's the last when's the sequel to the last starfighter happening <laughs> uh, when he knows uh <laughs> i'd be happy to know um i i do not know i do know that they are they are they have it ready to ready to do uh but they they have to s settle on on who, who's gonna be calling the shots you know mm. well and, let us know if uh, we can be of any help with that because we'd love to see that <laughs> me too you know uh i i certainly respect um the people that are that are that are holding out for the saying look we want to do this it's a, it's a very unique movie and we want to make sure to preserve its uniqueness mm. um and so i but i i don't know how these things get made um uh it used to kind of be like hey i'm friends with the head of the eh, you know let's let's make a deal what do you say charlie you know um that doesn't you know movies are just they're just way too expensive now and there's all kinds mm -hmm. of reasons why things get made or why things don't get made mm -hmm. um i i i've been told of the you know the premise and everything and and I, I i like it i think it's terrific um i would love to do it i mean you know they they have said you know if we're doing it we want you to be in it you know and, um but i gotta leave it up to them i'm not uh that's not my call well, like I say, let us know if we can be of, of, of any help with that because we, we'd love to see All it. Because right. Tom 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 Cruise is doing Top Gun Maverick. Now's the yeah. time. You know, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, last question, and this is probably the most controversial question, and this is for both of you. This is one really starts big arguments on Twitter. Um, is Jaws the Revenge a Christmas movie? Absolutely. Sure. Why yes. Not? That was the right answer. <laughs> I think it's a Christmas movie. I think it's up there with Die Hard. You know, it's one of those that you watch every Christmas because it is set at Christmas. So I think it's okay. All right. It is set at... <laughs> why not? You know, it's... why not? You know, <laughs> that's funny. I was preparing for something really controversial. Well, honestly, like... that's as controversial as it gets within the Jaws community. But um, now I've got your email addresses. I'll just pin you some more controversial questions and then we can you know, get some official quotes. <laughs> Um, guys, thank you so, so much for taking some time out. We appreciate sort of how busy you guys must be. And this is a really special occasion, obviously, because it is the 35th anniversary of Jaws Revenge. And it's amazing to have the Brody brothers back together. Um, yes. It would be great if you could um, just give the Daily Jaws community a, a quick shout out and uh, just a, a goodbye. That would be amazing. Go ahead. Here's cheers to the Daily Jaws community. Is that what it says? Daily Jaws. The Perfect. cheers to the Daily Jaws community. God love you. Okay, I didn't even know there was the Daily Jaws community, but now that I do, I want to give uh, a huge shout out to the Daily Jaws community and thanks for watching. How cool is that? And how cool that after 35 years, I got to see my brother again. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bringing families back together. That's what we're all about. That's what we're That's all about. That's the Daily Jaws community. <laughs> I have this great picture of you and my actual brother. At the at the, uh, <laughs> at the at the premiere, and I actually just got off the phone with him. It's funny. Oh, nice. Okay. Like cool. right before, yeah. Yeah. Very strange. Uh, well, guys, thanks again uh, for your time. It's really, really genuinely appreciated. Um, and keep us up to date with sort of any projects that you guys are sort of working on. We'll put a link to your restaurant in the description of the articles, Mitchell. Um, if you've got a particular yeah. website or anything, Lance, um, let us know. Oh, sorry, Mitchell, can't quite um, hear you there. Any, anybody who comes to Atlanta, come to Metro Fresh. You can come. I'm in, usually in the kitchen. Usually Metro the kitchen. Fresh. All right. Metro Fresh. Cool. Cool. All that, right, guys. That, that might be soon as well. <laughs> well, this has been uh, Ross for the Daily Jaws with Lance Guest and Mitchell Anderson, the stars of Jaws the Revenge, on this very special 35th anniversary video. I'll drink to your legs. Farewell and adieu. All righty. See you later. Good to see you, Mitch. Thanks, guys. Bye, Lance. Take care, guys. Bye, Thank you so much again. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to know more about Jaws, please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit our website, thedailyjaws.com. Until next time, we drink to your legs. Farewell and adieu.